So the next topic of this little brief chemistry tutorial is balancing reactions by trial and error. And let's begin with the simplest of simplest. Let's say we have a reaction where we're using zinc that reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So we have our four different chemicals, we have our reactants, we have our products. And the simplest way to do this is Let's write up a little inventory right here on the bottom. So we have some sink on both sides. We have some hydrogen and we have some chlorine. I split it down the middle and then on the reactant side I have one zinc atom. I have one chlorine, one hydrogen atom and one chlorine atom. On the rea on the product side we have one zinc atom. We have two chlorines from this subscript number 2 over here and we have two hydrogens from this subscript number two in the hydrogen atom. So how could we start? Let's try to balance out the hydrogen first and see how this goes. So we have two on this side and we have one on this side. So what we can do, the only thing we can actually do is add coefficients. So I'm gonna add a two over here, but remember this two affects both of the counts on this side. So if this two goes over here, this means that hydrogen changed to two and chlorine also changes to two. Now, once the numbers match up and we have the exact same number of both sides, the reaction is balanced and we're completely done with this one, which is pretty straightforward and quite simple. Let's try another reaction in which we have um, iron two oxide, iron two oxide that reacts with carbon monoxide to produce iron and carbon dioxide gas. So in this case, um, we write our little inventory again. We have some iron on both sides, we have some carbon, and we have some oxygen. This is quite interesting because we only have oxygen in one compound here, and here the oxygen is split between two compounds. So we have to keep in mind the numbers because this is always going to be even numbered, the oxygen is, and here we're going to get a different proportion. So let's let's see how this works out. We have two iron on this side, one iron on the other. We have four oxygen on this side, one, two, three, and another one, so four. And on this side we have two from the subscript and the carbon dioxide. And last but not least, we have one carbon atom and one carbon atom. So let's see how this works out. We're going to leave the, um, let's see, we can start with the iron, but I will leave that at the end in case we have to do some modifications, but really, let's try to figure it out how this could happen. For example, if this is a 2, and here we have a 4, but it's split between 2, my mathematical thinking tells me how can I change this one so that add it to 3, it's going to give me an even number. So the simplest way is right now I can uh, I can add uh, number uh, so once we have completed this little inventory what we can actually do is I have two oxygen on this side and I have six oxygen on this side so once we have created our inventory 214 112 we realize that there are four on this side of oxygen and two oxygen on this side so let's try a hunch I'm gonna add a three over here that way three oxygen plus three oxygen is gonna give me six and that allows me to add a number three over here and my oxygen will be balanced. So once I read this three over here, the oxygen becomes six and it's balanced, but it also changed my carbon count to three. However, with this three that I added here, it also changed the carbon count over here to three. So carbon and oxygen are balanced. The last step to balance is iron. We have two iron atoms over here and one on the other side, and we just finish by adding a uh, number two on this side. And once we have all the matching numbers, 236, 236, it means that this is balanced, okay? Let's try another example, and 
Another example is combustion reactions. So combustion reactions always involve a hydrocarbon with oxygen reacting to produce carbon dioxide, water, and some heat. Okay? So, again, we want to try to balance out everything. My tip for balancing combustions is we always balance carbon first, hydrogen next, and oxygen at the very last. So we have one carbon on this side and one carbon on the other. We have four hydrogen here, and on this side we have two hydrogen. We have two oxygen on this side, and on this side we have three oxygen split between two compounds. So carbon is balanced, we're gonna leave it alone. Hydrogen is not balanced, we have a number four here, and we have a two on the other side. So let's go ahead and add a two. And once I add a two right here, my hydrogen becomes four, but let's see how my oxygen count changes. So we have two oxygen here, and then two from this coefficient over here, this changed to four. So my final step is just to balance the oxygen. So we have two oxygen atoms here, and once I add a two, we have four, and we have our matching numbers, one, four, four, one, four, four, this is balanced. Let's see another combustion. Let's try it now with ethane. So with ethane, we have C2H6. Oxygen gives me the same products because we're doing combustion. And remember, heat, you don't need to balance it. It's just part of the standard reaction. So I write my inventory once again. And how do I do this again? Let's try carbon first. There's two on this side, one on this side. Six hydrogen and two hydrogen on this side. Two oxygen and three oxygen. So once again, let's start with carbon. We're gonna add a two over here. Once I add that two, the carbon becomes two, and my oxygen count changes. Let's see, two times two is four, plus one is five. So let's see how that one goes, okay? Let's stop right there, and now let's try to balance the hydrogen. We have six on this side, and in order for that to work, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna add a three in front of the water, and that changes my hydrogen count to six, which is now balanced, but it also changed the oxygen count. So we have three oxygen atoms plus four, that becomes seven, and on this side we have two. What could we add? We could add a 3.5, and this is gonna change to seven. However, a little rule is we always want whole number coefficients. So once we have a decimal, the last thing we need to adjust is multiply everything times two. This becomes six, this becomes four, this becomes seven, and the implicit one that's right here becomes a number two. So my final numbers for this reaction are gonna be two ethane, seven oxygen, four carbon dioxide, and six water molecules. Let's try that again with another combustion reaction. We're gonna do propane now. And again, you're gonna see that this gets quite repetitive, but practice makes perfect, so it should be quite simple for you guys once you get the hang of it. So we do our little inventory once again, CHO, three on this side, one on this side, eight on this side, two on this side, two on this side, and three oxygen on that side. So three and one, I add a three. This changes everything over, this, over here. Three times two is six, plus one is seven. So make sure you're updating your inventories, otherwise it becomes quite confusing. Next, let's do the hydrogen. So this is eight. We Here we have two, so we're gonna add a four, and this changes into eight. And now, this also changed our oxygen count on this side. So three times two is six, plus four is 10. 10 is a nice even number, which we can divide by two. So our last step is to add a number five coefficient, making it 10, and now we have balanced numbers, three, eight, and 10. So we're good with this. Let's try another example, which is quite common in chemistry, and it's when we have acid-base neutralization. Let's say we have something like um, phosphoric acid that's interacting with magnesium hydroxide, and we're gonna produce, of course, an, a salt, an oxy salt, which is magnesium, phosphate, and some water. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what we can do is, let's look at our inventory really quickly, and this is very simple. 
we're going to write the amount of H is, we have H over here, we have magnesium, we have oxygen, and we have phosphate. But I'm going to teach you a little trick with this. A good step would be to, number one, balance the metal. Balance the metal in the base. And here, the metal in the base is magnesium, where we have one over here and three on the other side. So once I add a three, that magnesium is going to be balanced. And number two trick is balance the oxyanion. So in this case, the oxyanion is phosphate. We have one phosphate on this side, and we have two phosphates on the other. Here it's complete, right? So I add a number two over here. And this becomes two. And last step is check your water. Check your water. Remember, water is H2O, but it can also be written as HOH, right? So here we have one HOH. But now let's count. How many H's do we have in total? Six. Two times three is six. And how many OH's do we have? We have two from the formula times three from the coefficient. We have six of them. So 6HOH equals 6H2O. And once we add that 6 over here, our reaction is effectively balanced. So whenever you encounter an acid with a base, you want to balance the metal first, balance the oxyanion from the acid, and then check your water at the very end, and you're going to breeze through these exercises. So good luck.